welcome to Alpha Military TV. Thanks for tuning in once again. My name is Richard Saunders. I'm back in the Alpha Military multimedia recording garage because the weather outside is still blowing again and raining and horrible. Um, but I'm going to be talking about another budget PCP rifle. We've done a series of, of reviews on budget rifles and they seem to be things that people really want to hear about. Um, and the rifle that I've got today is another Turkish rifle. It's, it's made by Kral and it's the NP03. And as you can see, it's very compact, very light. Um, it only weighs two and a half kilos unscoped. Um, and in terms of length, it ranges from 780 millimeters to 880 millimeters, thanks to a, a sliding telescopic uh, stock uh, that locks in, uh, I think, six different positions. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna run through the rifle from back to front zoom in on those uh, key features, uh, look at the way that uh, the magazine is loaded and inserted into the breech, how you fill the magazine, and also how you fill the rifle uh, with air as well. And then, hopefully, if the weather cooperates, we'll take it down the range and put a few shots through it as well. So let's talk about the key features then. One of the standout features on the Crowl uh, NP03 is this telescopic uh, stock. Now there's a little pivot switch underneath here that if you push that in, will enable you to move the stock up and down a range of 10 centimeters, uh, which is really good because obviously that enables you to get very good uh, shoulder fit um, for yourself. And you know, if you're a smaller shooter and for, for juniors as well, it, it means that they can get perfect um, shoulder fit and eye alignment as well, eye relief on the scope. Because if you look at it you know, at its shortest level, you know, that's that's really is a very short pull um, and a nice feature. Now, in addition to the, uh, the telescopic nature of the stock, you've also got the ability to adjust this cheek piece. There's another button just here, and by pressing that, you can pull this cheek piece up and down. I think that's as high as it will go. Now, the one thing I would say is that, you know, there is a little bit of, of play and a little bit of movement um, in the cheek piece because there's only sort of one anchor point for it either side of the stock. So you do get a little bit of movement. Now I have to say that with the rifle in your shoulder and that against your cheek, I didn't notice it too much, but you know, it, it's something to be aware of. Now, obviously forward of that, and I should say the whole stock is made from a very durable black polymer plastic. Um, and it really does strike me as a rifle that you could probably throw around a farmyard all night long without worrying about scratching it. Now, the pistol grip is quite chunky. Um, it is um, contoured for your fingers. There's a, um, a groove for your thumb. There's a groove for your, uh, for your trigger finger as well. And it will work just as well for left-handers too. Um, yeah, very comfortable for left-handers too. Now, the only issue for left-handers to bear in mind is that I believe I'm right in saying that this side lever will only be, can only be located on the right side of the rifle. I don't know whether it's an option, a factory option to move it to the left side, but looking at it here, there's no obvious way of moving that round yourself. Also, the, the safety catch, which is in a, a good position up here, well away from the trigger, um, that is only located on the right-hand side of the rifle. In the back position, the rifle, the rifle is safe. Push it forward with your thumb and the rifle is live. The side lever itself is sprung on the first stage. You see that? Um, and then if you pull it back a second stage, that cocks the rifle and cycles the pellet. It's obviously, obviously it's, it's silver, so it could give you away in the field if the sunlight glint, uh, catches it and it glints in the sunlight. Uh, and I suppose it would be better if it was black, but it's a minor thing to pick up on. Now, the scope rail is relatively short, um, and it's, it's short because you have that additional adjustment through the telescopic um, stock to be able to, to get really good position for the scope. I didn't find a problem, I just plonked the scope on there and it's in, it's in the right position, no problem at all. Now it has Crow's dual rail system, which means that you can either use uh, 22 mil Picatinny mounts, or you can use 11 or 12 mil um, dovetail mounts as well, which is what I've got on here. 
uh, and it's obviously it's split in two pieces to accommodate the magazine uh, which goes in this uh, in the breech just here. Forward of that, you've got a, a little silver wheel here that adjusts the, the power output. And on this side, on my side, there's a plus and a minus, so you know whether you're going up or down. Now, these sorts of things are great features on FAC rifles where you've obviously got more, uh, more power to play with in terms of range. And, you know, the steps that you make, you know, are fairly significant uh, steps in terms of reducing the power output. On a 12 foot pound rifle, you've got less to play with in the first place. So those steps are, are, f are much more smaller. Um, you know, but it is a useful thing to have, I guess, especially if you find yourself creeping over 12 foot pounds, um, you do have the ability to turn that down a little bit to keep yourself legal until you can get it, things sorted out uh, properly at a gunsmith. Now the trigger itself, uh, crowd triggers have really improved over the last 12 to 18 months and this one is, 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 is actually pretty good, especially when you consider this as a you know, sub 400 pound rifle. Um, there's no immediate um, way of adjusting it. Um, I've not had the stock off to know whether you can adjust it by taking the stock off. Um, but out of the box, the two stages were very, very crisp, very defined, uh, no creep and the let off was very good as well. So yeah, not a bad trigger at all. Now underneath on the underside, you've got a pressure gauge in here for the fill pressure and you've got a short Picatinny rail here. Now the air, uh, the air cylinder is 180 cc's. Now that's not going to give you a huge number of shots. You know, if you're going to buy a rifle for shooting on the range or pouring you know, lead down the range, um, then you're going to constantly be filling this, un this one up with air. I haven't got 12 foot pound uh, shot statistics for this rifle, um, but when I get on the range, I'll find out for myself. Um, I'm going to guess probably, I don't know, 60 to 70 shots, something like that, but we'll find out when we get on the range. And this rifle is not regulated either. So there is probably going to be a bit of a power curve that you'll need to factor in as well. The, the barrel on top is um, a 17 inch barrel, 430 millimeters. Um, it's fully shrouded and it, there is a, uh, a muzzle brake or a, a muzzle cap on the end. If you unscrew that, you can fit a, a silencer onto the, uh, onto the shroud. And you will probably want to do that because this does have a bit of a bark, I have to say. Now, if for whatever reason you wanted to remove the shroud and have that sort of uh, slim line, kind of naked barrel look, you can do that uh, because the, the barrel itself is also threaded. So you could put a silencer directly onto the barrel. Um, I'm not sure why you would do that, to be perfectly honest. I suppose if people like that kind of thin naked barrel look, it gives them that option. Um, but as I say, you will want to put a silence on this, especially if you're planning on using it in the garden or hunting with it as well. So I think that's all of the, uh, the key points on the rifle. What we do is now we'll zoom in on a few of those in close up, then we'll go through the whole magazine loading and insertion process and how to fill the rifle with air. Now you get two magazines with the Crowl MPO3. They're these, the fairly standard Crowl uh, cartridge type magazines uh, with a clear plastic faceplate. And you get uh, 14 shots in 177 and 12 in 22. And filling them is, is pretty straightforward. There's a little arrow 
at the top here on this faceplate that's telling you that you've got to rotate this faceplate round clockwise to load it and you've got to do that against the spring until it's all the way around and then take your first pellet and drop that in nose first. Now you're going to put, want to put your finger underneath it because if you don't it'll just fall all the way through. So finger underneath the hole at the back of the magazine and just drop that first pellet in. And then when you turn that faceplate back anti-clockwise that pellet, that first pellet stays in place and it's just a case of filling in the individual uh, chambers as you go. And so this takes uh, 12 2 2 pellets, which is what this rifle is. Nearly there, keep going. Right, final one. So when they're all in the, when the chambers are all full, just realign that, plas that plastic faceplate um, in position again so it's flush with the back of the, the magazine. Inserting the magazine into the NPO3 is nice and easy. I don't know if you can see this, but on the inside of the, the magazine, right in the middle there, there are some numbers. So each of the chambers are numbered, and when the magazine is located in the breech, you can see by looking at those numbers how many shots you have left. Now, to insert the magazine, first of all, you're going to want to put that safety catch uh, into the safe position and then pull back the cocking lever all the way to cock the rifle. Now, on the back of the magazine, as you can hopefully see, there is a, uh, a ridge on the magazine and that has to line up with a slot in the, uh, the top of the breech here. So what you need to do is, with the faceplate facing the back of the rifle, just put that magazine in nice and flat, locate that ridge in the slot, and then push it forward and close the side lever. Now, when, you're, when you've taken your last shot and the magazine is empty, you'll find that the, the side lever won't go forward, um, which is a really nice feature because it stops you dry firing, tells you that you're empty, and saves a bit of air as well. Well, there's nothing difficult about filling the MP3 either. Um, there's a collar on the end of the cylinder here with a hole in, and all you need to do is twist that collar round until it aligns with a hole, the fill port, at the top of the cylinder. And once you've done that, take your fill probe that's provided, put that into that, uh, that hole, that port, and then obviously you'll want to connect your airline to the back of the fill probe. Uh, and give the rifle a 200 bar fill. Well, there we go, that's the Kral MP03. Next stop is to take it down the range and see how it shoots. Well, we managed to get down to the range. It's still really blowy, but um, it is what it is. So let's see how the MP03, the Kral MP03, uh, shoots on the range. Well, that's six pellets in. I should have said before that this is, I put a target out at 30 meters. Um, and I'm using Air Arms Diablo Field 5.52 uh, pellets, uh, 16 grains. Five 
559. Five hundred sixty four. Five hundred seventy one. Five hundred sixty six. Well, that's uh, that's twelve shots now. That all average around about eleven point three, eleven point four, eleven point four foot pounds, which is um, yeah, which is very respectable. Let's go and see what the group likes looks like down on the range. Well, that's not too bad. It's a blowy old day today. Um, well, that's a full magazine, twelve pellets through one sort of hole, kind of finger size hole at 30 meters. Well, there you have it. That is the Crowl NP03, distributed and marketed in the UK by RangeRight. Very impressive little gun, I have to say. Nice and light, very compact. I was getting about 70 shots to a fill out of it. And as you could see from the video, very accurate, very consistent, 11.3, 11.4 11 foot pounds, about a 10 foot per second spread. So yeah, very nice good quality budget rifle. Now, I hope you found that useful. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe as well. It does help us out. And if you'd like to learn more on a whole range of air gunning topics, check out our website, which is www.alphamilitaria.com. Thanks for watching.